Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Radiant Central and I'm your host Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So recently someone had sent me an email over Facebook, over my Radiant Central Facebook page and they, they were asking me if there's ever been a time in my life where I went to food for comfort. Has there ever been a time where I was a comfort eater? And this person was just telling me that they've moved overseas, they're living in New Zealand, they have no family or friends, and they have an 11th month old son, and, and they find themselves comfort eating and binge eating, and, and there's times where they're just bored, or they just have nothing to do, no one around, and they just find themselves comfort eating because, you know, just of the change. And they're asking me if I've ever gone through that myself. And, and this person was also telling me that, it's, it's so different from what they're used to, you know, before they were like a nutritionist and a personal trainer and, and this is just so sort of out of their character. And I thought this is a great question because I myself have gone through this before. And right when I read the question, it's just that I had like flashbacks from times in my life where I've gone to food for comfort. And I, the two times in my life that stood out the most was many years ago when I quit smoking, I went to food for comfort. I, I guess for me, before I was, when I was a smoker, I used to go to smoking for comfort. And so when I quit smoking, I, I went to food. And I gained a lot of weight from that. And it was, it was a terrible, terrible <laughs> sort of time in my life because of that. You know, it's like you want to take care of yourself and get healthy and, and enjoy being free of, of an addiction. And next thing you know, what I was kind of creating a new addiction. And I found myself overeating and, and just not being very good with food. And the other time in my life where I found myself doing a lot of emotional eating is similar to this person's experience and, and that was four years ago when I moved overseas and right before I moved overseas I found out the B12 deficiency and I was supposed to be moving to Thailand but there was flooding and I ended up in Bali and and I was just at a very weird point in my life because I found out about the B12 deficiency. I wasn't feeling well. I was sort of in this thing where should I change my diet, should I not? I was on a raw food diet and uh, vegan for many years and vegetarian for most of my life. And I was thinking about adding in animal foods and cooked foods back into my diet. And, and I was living in a foreign place and I had no friends and I, I didn't know where I wanted to live or <laughs> like everything. It was like my whole life was upside down. And I went to food and I also went into yo-yo dieting because of that situation, especially because of the whole like B12 deficiency and I, should I stay on raw foods or should I go to cooked foods and I was kind of yo-yoing back and forth and, and at the same time I was just going through this big life change that I was comfort eating, there's times I was overeating or binge eating and, and just, it was awful. It was, I would say, one of the worst times of my life when dealing with food and, and change and, and just 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 feeling like I was out of control. And I found that the more I was trying to control it, the worse it got. And and this is something that I've seen over and over again in all areas of my life. You know, it's not only with food, but it's with relationships, it's with, with finances, career, all of that. It's kind of like the more we try and control things, <laughs> They, a lot of times they blow up in your face, you know, it, it, or we destroy it or sabotage it because of that control of trying to, to control everything when we can't, you know, and, and so for me this is just something that I found that it's like I naturally am inclined to try and control things, but it, it just, it doesn't work, and in fact it, it's like the reverse, it, it's like it just makes it worse. And so in my own situation, I went through a good year where I think just because my foundation was just so shaky and I didn't know what I was doing with my life and even with my diet and all that, it was all over the place. And, and the more I tried to control it, the worse it got. And it came to a point where I had to just let go. It was almost like there was this one day where I had to surrender and I had to let go of trying to control it. I had to let go of trying to, to maneuver it or, or to try this or to try that. Because every time I was trying something else or trying to control it or do it in a certain way, it was only making it worse and it would only kind of give it more power over me, you know, because I felt so powerless. I felt even more out of control <laughs> and, and the worse it got. And it was only until I kind of just let go, you know, and a lot of times when I tell people, you know, it's about letting go of the control, they feel like, oh, then does that mean it should be a free for all? Because if I'm trying to lose weight or I'm trying not to overeat or binge eat, I need to control it because I need to change it. But it's kind of like the more you try and change it, the worse it might get. That it's about finding a way where you're not going to one extreme where you're trying to control it all. 
but you're not going to the opposite extreme where you're giving up. And for me, it was, it was about surrendering to it. And it was also about looking more deeply into what was it that was causing me to be emotionally eating, to be binge eating or overeating or emotionally eating, comfort eating, like all of that. Like what, what was it that was sort of supercharging my food that I needed to go to food in order to find comfort? You know, why, why did I need to go to food? Why did I need to go to anything? What, what was it in myself that I was suffering from or felt I needed comfort for? You know, and to start working on that. And, and it was about, I would say a lot of it was about putting the food issues aside. You know, for me it was like I had to stop the yo-yoing or trying any diet. I just had to kind of put that stuff aside and start focusing in on, on my life and what was going on in my life to be making me suffer so much that I needed all that food. And, and to be honest with myself, you know, it's not always easy to look at yourself and say, what's wrong? What's going on? Why do I feel so sad? You know, why is it that I feel so anxious? Why is it that I feel like something's missing? What is it that's missing? What can I do? You know, and for myself, as an example of that, in a situation where I was going through a big transition from moving abroad, all of that was, it was about settling down. You know, for me, it was about finding a home and staying there. It was about finding friends and making friends and building a social life and, and committing myself to being there. You know, that it, it's, if you're going through any kind of life change and you're going through that transition, it's about putting both feet in. You know, not one foot in and then the other out the door, but both feet in and investing yourself in that. And I found that the more I worked on those things and about finding ways to to buffer my anxiety or buffer my stress or to to have things to do and to feel like I've got connections to people and, and emotional outlets and, and all of that, the easier it was with the food. The food kind of started taking care of itself, the less I needed to overeat or binge eat or comfort eat. You know, because I was finding other ways to feel good. And so for myself, it was about sort of exploring what is it that's making me go and eat in the first place and what I can do to, to make changes in my lifestyle to counter that. And I would say it's also about bringing in as many things into my daily life that made me feel good. So in ways I kind of learned that I couldn't control my food, but I can control how I felt about myself. And if I felt really lousy about myself, then I was more inclined to emotionally eat, to comfort eat, to overeat. But if I felt good about myself, then I didn't want those foods. So I don't, I feel good about myself after I've taken a shower. I feel great, you know. I, I don't overeat after I've had a shower or a bath. I don't overeat after I go for a massage or a facial. I don't overeat after I've gone exercising. I don't overeat after I bought a nice outfit. <laughs> like, you know, and yeah, these things are kind of, sh to some people, maybe shallow things or materialistic things, but these are the things that make me feel good. And so if I do these things every day, then I'm less inclined to give myself that opening to go and emotionally eat. You know, I've also mentioned in other videos too that most people binge eat, emotionally eat, overeat when they're alone. They're less likely to binge eat on two cakes if they're in the company of, of many people, right? And so it's important to have people around you. And if you don't have people around you, then find people to be around. Find a way of connecting with other people. And it might be through finding groups that have similar interests and doing that or joining a class or finding activities that involve other people, that you're busy, that you're doing things. Because most of the time, most people are not overeating while they're busy. It's always when they're alone afterwards. And if you find you're one of these people too, that it's like, yeah, you feel great when you're around people, but when you get home at the end of the day or in the evening and you're alone and that's when you start overeating and binge eating or comfort eating, then you have to figure out what can you do right when you get home or during those kind of week, the week hours. You know, what are the things that you can do at home that make you feel good, that make you feel the opposite, that you'd never want to even overeat. You know, like taking a hot bath or doing your nails or cleaning the house, things like that. Those things will make you feel good. You know, they boost you up and then the last thing you want to do is like binge. Okay, so it's about figuring these things out, you know, but a lot of times, again, like I want to emphasize is that what's important is to move the focus because if you focus too much on controlling yourself and controlling what you're eating, you're also in the back of your mind reinforcing to yourself that you need to be, in, you need to be controlled. And this is what, why people end up sabotaging themselves, is that no one likes to feel like they, they have to be controlled. No one f likes to feel like they're being controlled, 
right? We fight against that. And so you're fighting yourself. So you want to take the control away. And you want to instead give yourself that space where you have confidence in yourself and you feel good about yourself. That if you feel good about yourself, you're going to make better decisions. And bottom line, that's what it's about. So move away from the control and move into finding ways to feel good about yourself. What can you do every morning, every afternoon, and every evening to feel good about yourself? And you'll see that things start changing just because of that. All right, so these are my tips. And I just want to remind everyone too, if you want to do a juice fast, there's the next 10 day juice fasting program. It starts next Tuesday, November 4th. And this is a great program. If anyone wants to do an extended juice fast, either for the very first time or they're experienced juice fasters and they just want to do it as a group, every month I host a juice fasting group online. It's an online program. When you sign up, you get the full guidelines for the juice fast, also the diet to transition onto the fast and the transition off because that's very important. And all the guidelines as to what to drink during the fast, all of that. And then on the actual program itself, there's a private online forum, there's daily videos for the juice fast. So every day of the juice fast, there's 20 to 40 minute long videos that walk you through everything you need to know about juice fasting and taking care of yourself and the detox and the cravings and, and all of that fun stuff. And there's also the forum where you can, can connect with everyone doing the juice fast with you. I'm on the forum every day answering questions and offering additional support. It's a lot of fun. It's great to do these things as a group. It keeps you motivated and inspired and keeps you going, keeps you on track. All right, so if you want to join us, it starts next Tuesday, November 4th, and you can sign up at radiantcentral.com, click on products, and you'll see 10-day juice fasting program there. I'm wishing you guys a super fabulous day, and I'll see you again soon.